Opus 78 of F sharp ma major sonata was very important for Beethoven, and the one that comes now, Opus 81A, so called Les Adieux, or much nicer in its German name, Lebewohl. This is a very important piece, written for the Archduke Rudolf, one of his favorite pupils and a very close friend, and a very able musician and composer. If we just look at all the masterpieces that Beethoven had written for him, then we find like a... Or, you know... The Archduke's trio or the last violin sonata. And Mr. Solemnis and several other pieces. So you don't write works to somebody who you don't think of very highly. Uh, now, in 1809, when Beethoven wrote this sonata, uh, Napoleon was attacking Vienna, and the aristocrats had to flee Vienna, among them the Archduke Rudolf. And we have the exact date of this sonata, 4th of May, 1809. And it's the only piece of program music among the Beethoven sonatas. However, it should not be taken too literally. I think it would be a, a wonderful piece of music even without this program. And like the Sixth Symphony, he, Beethoven writes here, mehr uh, ton malerei, uh, mehr empfindung als ton malerei, so more feeling than tone painting. That's his instruction to the Sixth Symphony. And also, that could, that could be the motto for this E-flat major sonata. However, we have this story, which is not just fantasy, but it's, it's a fact that these um, events occurred. And for each of the three movements, there is a title. Uh, Lebewohl, or Farewell, is the first movement. Uh, the Abwesenheit, or Absence, the second movement. And uh, Das Wiedersehen, or the, the Return, the last movement. This starts with this motive. Three intervals, like two horns playing. This is obviously horn music. And he writes, Lebe wohl, farewell. So, Lebe wohl. But what happens on the last note, the bass comes in with a deceptive cadence. This is so beautiful. So it has this poignant sadness because of you would expect you no instead of and then questions. Uh, there is a precedent in this kind of program music. Johann Sebastian Bach, uh, one of his early pieces starts... Uh, Capriccio on the departure of his beloved brother. I wonder if Beethoven knew this, but, but it's again, the story is that somebody that you dearly love goes away and you are worried about 
what is going to happen to him. So, already here, after the first Lebewohl, the bass starts this chromatic descent, which is a, what they call in 18th century rhetorics, uh, Passus Deriusculus, yeah? a heavy passage that foretells tragedy or, or danger. Again, we have a Lebewohl. But look at what he does. Here we really had an introduction, unlike in the Appassionata. Um, a slow introduction where he introduces the main motives. First of all, this Lebewohl, this farewell motif that, that will go through the whole movement in all different transformations. And here, after these great expectations, no, this Allegro breaks out. Sounds like a new theme, but in the bass. And this is the inversion of Liebevoll. So, Jung. Next transformation of Lebewohl, you have in the bass and the, in the soprano inversion. And it all comes from if I play this in the main minor. Here we are again. Even this one, but now it's a diminution in small note values. repeat of the exposition. So, again, I think this, this, mov this movement wants to express his wish to, to withhold him, to withhold his friend, not, not to go away. Uh, now, the development section
Yeah. So we have the Lebevol motif, and in the bass. This is the quaver motif from, from the Allegro. And this is very interesting how compact all it, it happens in a very short time. This is this deconstruction from we had this and uh, and uh, in the end only two notes remain. How can you break something down to to its smallest uh, atoms? Uh, and then starts to repeat it and suddenly we realize we are back at the beginning. Mm. And then there is a very poetic coda uh, is swimming in this Lebevol motif. And I don't like to speculate too much in, in poetic images, but in this case I think it's, it's allowed to, to imagine, because this Archduke was not traveling by plane, <laughs> and not even by train, but by, by a, a coach pulled by horses, and I can hear the horses here. And, uh, this is wonderful, like, like if one person is standing here and this coach is going further and further away and still coming up on a hill. And then Beethoven writes something almost impossible because he, on this long C, he writes a crescendo. On a piano, you can't make a crescendo. You, you can, I cannot do. That's what he wants. So all I could do is to stand up, maybe. <laughs> but that would be a little cheap. And the Archduke has gone. Now there is the second movement, the Abwesenheit absence, is a wonderful portrayal of, of melancholy feelings.
it's in C minor, it's uh, again in a walking movement, not too slow. So uh, it's in C minor, and you hear the, the C minor chord, but immediately he moves away from it. So you have a, a sense of insecurity. And you can imagine this motif. Wobis du, where are you? I imagine this question. Uh, and also very speaking, very rhetorical. Almost like like uh, baroque music, very much like a, like a Bach or a Handel uh, recitativo. Um, uh, after uh, this is a very short movement, and like in the Appassionata and in the Waldstein, uh, it doesn't close. It leads into the final movement, and after the two repetitions of the main section. At last we reach the dominant of C minor. So, this melancholy second movement of the absence uh, transforms itself and, and there is suddenly this return, he is back and somehow time is compressed into, into very, very short seconds. Uh, the whole second movement of the absence, it takes about two minutes, but it must describe months or years of absence. And, but important is this, this incredible joy, that the joy of, of, of two, two friends. This is a very, very profound, deep friendship between these two men, and it's a very, very touching, and there is nothing theatrical about it. Uh, however, Beethoven wants to give this joy and the theme itself is, it couldn't be simpler, just uh, tonic dominant. Tonic. Mm. Six bars. And then it goes into the left hand. And 
And then a third variation, full orchestra. Uh, now, everybody knows this. This is, this is also a piece dedicated to the Archduke Rudolf. So it's like a few years before Les Adieux, the, the Emperor Concerto. And again, uh, this is like a piano concerto without the orchestra. Thank God they are not here. <laughs> This, this is like in Vienna, all the church bells are going. Yum. This is just this little variation. Yambic. Again, these figurations are straight out of the Emperor Concerto. Um, then a very short development section follows. Just these three notes, and it's interesting, this whole development section stays in pianissimo region. It's beautiful how the, he changes the voicing here. What used to be in the upper voice is now in the lower volume. Just these three notes, and he uses a very intricate imitation technique of diminutions and, and strettas. Uh. This is a false recapitulation in the subdominant, but he, after two bars, he turns away. And here we have the real Recapitulation. Now let me play this whole development. It only takes a minute, but I shouldn't talk. And 
this would be the end of the piece, but now comes the, because it's a, such a poetic piece. Yum. Comes an epilogue, a coda. This is uh, meno allegro, so it in a small, in a slower motion, and it reminds us of the beginning of the whole sonata, of the lebevol, because we are hearing the horns. Now a variation. and uh, finish it <laughs> Thank you.